Okay, I'll start by introducing myself. My name is Yeon Kim, and I'm from Korea. And I study in Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. I'm in my final year studying biochemistry. Okay, so I'll, let, I'll now begin. Okay, so a few days ago, it was Valentine's Day, and many of the shops you see in malls were covered with roses and heart shapes, as if to remind you of that um, special occasion. We value love so much that we even have a day to celebrate love. So what is it that makes us humans so obsessed with the idea of love? To begin with, we use this heart shape as the universal symbol of love and affection. But this association with the heart symbol and the blood-pumping heart organ heart and the rather abstract idea of love is rather confusing for it is our brains, not our hearts, that are responsible for generating the feeling of love. Biologically speaking, um, love involves various neurotransmitters and hormones. Neurotransmitters are chemicals that act as messengers to relay information from your um, um, throughout your nervous system that coordinates your heart, uh, coordinates your brain with the rest of your body. Hormones, on the other hand, are biochemicals released into the bloodstream to regulate um, crucial activities in metabolism, digestion, reproduction, and so on. So when you first lay your eyes upon a would-be lover, that instant surge of lust and attraction is caused by sex hormones called testosterone in both male and female. Past that initial attraction stage, when one is completely love-struck, three neurotransmitters come into play. These are dopamine, adrenaline, and serotonin. And dopamine is involved in the brain's reward system. Drugs like cocaine act to stimulate this dopamine release, which is why it's so addictive. Love, like cocaine, is addictive because of this dopamine release. Love can also be a very stressful deal. So under these stressful conditions, neurotransmitters called... Um, Adrenaline is released, and this is what causes your heart beat to fasten, your mouth to dry up, and your palms to get sweaty. Serotonin, on the other hand, is like the happiness or calmness neurotransmitter. So people who experience love actually have an artificially low level of these serotonin, similar to those people with OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. This explains the um, anxiety, the infatuation and slight craziness you see in people in love. Last but not least, oxytocin, known as the coddling hormone, is actually involved in um, forming a very long-term relationship between a couple. This is not only seen amongst romantic relationships, but also between mother and child. I know it's not exactly the most romantic or poetic way to describe love in a um, in terms of these neurotransmitters or hormones, but at least next time when you feel it, you know it. Thank you for listening.